Hi there, my name is Wendy and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is one of my beginner series and today I'm going to take you through making a granny square aimed at absolute beginners. We're going to be working two colours and I'm going to be taking you step by step all the way through from the very beginning to finishing off your ends at the end of the last four rounds. I've also added the link for the written version of the pattern to my website so I'll put that in the description notes below and that's a free PDF download so that you can take a look at a pattern and use that for reference in the future too. For your first granny square I like to teach a two colour version so that you can see the row below quite clearly and it just helps you um, crochet into the right places and for today's version I'm going to be demonstrating with this colourway uh, because the pink stands out a little bit better and it's clearer for you to see. So I'm going to be using some Stylecraft Special DK double knitting and that's a standard UK weight acrylic double knitting yarn and I'm using these two shades here that I've wound off earlier. Um, I'm also using a 4mm crochet hook and I've got a darning type wool needle here. I think this is a tapestry needle um, and that's for darning in your ends afterwards. You'll need to have a pair of scissors for snipping your ends and I'll also be using four little scraps of yarn to tie into the corners for the first three rows. But if you don't have a different colour, that's fine. You can always use one of these and you'll only use this the first time you ever make a granny square. You won't need that again. The stitches we'll be using today are making chains, slip stitches and the UK treble stitch. Now, if you're using American stitch terminology, the UK treble stitch is known as a USA double crochet stitch. I'll also add a couple of links in the description notes below, taking you to my videos for how to make a chain and how to make the UK treble stitch, just in case you need to see that in more detail. So just before we start, don't forget to subscribe to get updates of my latest videos and hit that bell to get notifications of when they go live. So now let's get our hooks and our yarn and get going with making this granny square. This is the left-handed video, so if you're right-handed, I'm going to put a link above and in the description box below to take you to the right-handed video. The first thing we'll be doing is making a slip knot and working six chain. So if you can already do this, you can whiz along to the time that I've just written here on the lower part of the screen. And if not, hang on here with me and I'm going to show you how I make a slip knot and demonstrate how to make six chain. My version of making a slip knot is to lay the yarn across my fingers with the end of the yarn going along the outer edge of the little finger. I then hold that in place with my thumb and I wrap the yarn around the top of my fingers underneath and I form a cross and hold that in place with my thumb. I then wrap it around exactly the same way but lower down and again hold that in place with my thumb. So the first loop I made was the upper loop and the second loop I made was the lower loop. Now you can either use your crochet hook or your finger but pop that underneath the top loop grab the bottom loop and just gently pull it through and then as you do hold both ends of the yarn gently and as you pull you create the flexible loop which is the slip knot that will sit on your crochet hook so that's there like that now you want to leave a little bit of an end you want to leave an end long enough to sew in afterwards so I usually think that four inches ten centimeters is absolutely fine so now we're going to make a chain. So to do this, I'm going to put the yarn in my opposite hand and I'm going to put my forefinger on top of that stitch and that's to stop it from spinning. If I don't do that, as I take the yarn over the hook, the stitch is going to spin round. So I've got my finger, my forefinger on the top of that stitch and then you're going to hear me all the time saying yarn over or yarn over the hook, which means the same thing. And that means that the yarn is coming up the back of the hook, over the top of the hook and down the front. 
So I'll do that again. The yarn comes up the back of the hook, over the top of the hook and down the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yarn up the back, over the top and down the front, making that yarn over movement. And then with the hand that's holding the yarn, I'm going to take my thumb and my forefinger and grab that little stitch that's on the crochet hook. And I'm just going to pull it slightly away from the hook just to open up the space. So I'm going to make sure now that my hook is facing downwards. I don't want the hook coming back looking at me as if it was a toothbrush. I want that hook to be facing downwards and then I scoop back through and I've created one chain. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to put my finger on top of the hook, take the yarn up the back, over the top and down the front and that has created the yarn over movement. I'm going to grab that little stitch underneath the crochet hook turn my hook downwards catching the yarn and scooping it back through and I've now got two chains on my hook so again I'm going to do one more this way I'm going to take the yarn up the back over the top down the front grab the chain under the hook just very gently just lower it slightly away from the hook opening up that gap turning my hook downwards and scooping through now you will also find that you can take your hook in front of the yarn, underneath the yarn and up behind the yarn and you've created that same movement. So I'll do that again. You have to have a little bit of tension between the yarn from the hook to your hand and you take the hook in front of the yarn, underneath the yarn and up behind and you've created that same movement. So I'm just going to hold this little chain underneath the hook and turn my hook downwards and scoop. And I've got four chains on my hook. So again, the hook goes in front of the yarn, underneath the yarn and up behind the yarn and I've made a yarn over. And then I turn the hook downwards and scoop back through. And then one more in front, underneath and up behind and I've made that yarn over movement and I scoop back through. So if I take a look now, I've got this little tiny slip knot that I made at the beginning and then I've got these V's. Now when we're counting our chains, we don't count this little slip knot that we made at the beginning, but we count the V's and we don't count the stitch that's on the hook. So I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six chains and I'm now ready to join this to make a ring. So I'm going to ignore that little slip knot and I'm going to take my hook and I'm going to put it through the middle of the first V, that's the first chain that we made. So I'm going to just pop my hook through there and now when I look I've got my yarn at the back, so I've got my yarn at the back here and I've got this U shape dangling from my hook with two stitches on it. So just like when we made the chain, we're going to take the yarn over the hook and we're going to turn the hook downwards and we're going to scoop back through. And that's made our first slip stitch and that's joined that chain to create a ring. So if we take a look at it now, you can see that we've got this ring. Now you might have a little baggy bit at the top here and that's just where you've made your slip stitch. But don't worry, that's going to get covered so it doesn't matter at all. But we've made our ring and we're now ready to start round one. So the first thing that we're going to do in round one is make three chain. And we're going to make three chain at the beginning of every round that we make now. And that three chain is going to stand up and it's going to be a pretend stitch. So we count that three chain as one stitch. And we're now going to make two trebles. So to do this, I'm going to make that yarn over movement and I'm going to make sure that my yarn is at the back of my work. I don't want the yarn here in front of my work. I want to make sure that the yarn is at the back. So I'm going to make a yarn over and then I'm going to take my hook through the front to the back of the ring. So I'm going straight through the middle of the hole. 
and then I'm going to make another yarn over and this will sort of flop into place but that is right. So I then draw that hook back through and I've got three stitches on my hook. So one, two, three and that's the first half of my stitch made. I'm now going to take the yarn over the hook and I'm going to draw it back through. So I'm going to turn it downwards and draw it back through the first two stitches. And I've got two stitches left on my hook. So now I'm going to make that yarn over movement again. And I'm going to draw it through the last two stitches on my hook. And I've made my first treble stitch. So now when we look at it, we've got this three chain standing up here. And then we can put our finger between the gap there and our treble. And if we look at our treble, we can see that there is a little V standing on top of it. Just like when we were making our chains, each stitch will have this little V on top. So I'm going to take this stitch that I've just made in my, in my thumb and forefinger and the ring in the other hand and just gently pull them apart and push that treble stitch up towards that um, three chain and if that three chain looks a bit baggy or distorted don't worry this is your first granny square that you've you've made and you do need to have that three chain at the side so we're now going to make another treble stitch in the ring so I'm going to take the yarn over the hook through the center of the hole and then a yarn over again which sort of flops into place pull that hook back through to the front and I've got three stitches on my hook and that is the first half of the stitch made. So now we're going to decrease slowly back down to one stitch again. So I'm going to take the yarn over the hook and draw back through the first two stitches. And I've got two stitches left on my hook. And then I'm going to make the yarn over movement again. And I'm going to draw back through the last two stitches and I've made another treble. So I've got my three chain and I've got one treble here and then my second treble and there's three stitches all together. And you've now made the first side of your square. So we're now going to make a corner and to do this, we're going to make two chain. So that's one, two. Then I'm going to take my stitches and I'm going to hold them in one hand again and my ring and just pull gently apart to open up that working area because I don't want to run out of space and start crocheting over the beginning of my round. So now I'm going to make three more trebles into this ring. So I've got my yarn at the back of the work and I'm going to make a yarn over and then I'm going to take my hook from front to back through that ring yarn over and draw the hook back through and I've got three stitches on my hook. I'm going to make a yarn over again and draw back through the first two stitches and I've got two stitches left on my hook. Yarn over again and draw back through the last two and I've made another treble. So we're going to go again, yarn over the hook, hook through the center of the ring yarn over the hook and draw it back through to the front and we have three stitches on our hook. Yarn over, scoop back and draw through the first two stitches and we've got two stitches left on our hook. Yarn over and draw back through the last two. So now I can put my fingers between and I can see that I've got this nice corner appearing here where the two chain is and I've made two trebles. So I want to make another treble. So it's going to be yarn over, hook from front to back through that ring, yarn over and draw back through to the front and I've got three stitches on my hook. Yarn over and then draw back through the first two and then yarn over and draw back through the last two. And so now I've made another side. I've got three trebles in a row and this is what we're going to be doing all the time. We're going to be making groups of three trebles. 
So I'm now going to make another corner. So I'm going to make two chain. And you can see that I've now got two sides to my square and I'm now going to make my third side. So I'm going to make another three trebles in a row. So it's yarn over or yarn over the hook, either is fine. And then the hook goes through that center ring, yarn over again, which sort of flops into place, draw that hook back through, and I've got three stitches on my hook. Yarn over and draw back through the first two, yarn over, and draw back through the last two. So that's one more treble made. So I'm going to make my second treble. Yarn over the hook, hook through the center of that ring, yarn over the hook, draw back through to the front, and there's three stitches on my hook. Yarn over the hook, draw back through the first two, yarn over the hook, and draw back through the last two. And we've got two trebles. So we're going to make one more, yarn over the hook, take the hook through the center of the ring, yarn over the hook, draw the hook back through to the front, and we have three stitches on our hook. Yarn over the hook, draw it back through the first two stitches, yarn over the hook, and draw it back through the last two. So you can see now we've got three sides in our square. Our first round of our square is appearing. So now I'm going to make my third corner. So that's one, two chains. So now we've made the two chains, we can make our last side and I've just taken those stitches in my hand and the ring in the opposite and I've pulled it apart again just to open up the working area a little bit for me. So again, we're going to make our last three trebles now. So it's yarn over the hook, take that hook from front to back through the hole, yarn over, draw through to the front, yarn over and draw back through the first two, yarn over and draw back through the last two. And so that's our first treble made. Now it's yarn over the hook, take the hook through the hole, yarn over the hook and draw the hook back through and we've got three stitches on our hook. Yarn over the hook and draw it back through the first two, yarn over the hook and draw it back through the last two. So you can see we've now got two trebles and I can put my fingers between them. So now we're going to make our last treble. So it's yarn over the hook, take that hook through the hole or the ring, yarn over the hook and pull that hook back through to the front and we've got three stitches on our hook. Yarn over the hook and draw back through the first two, yarn over the hook and draw back through the last two. So now all we've got to do in round one is to make our last corner. So we're going to make two chains, one and two. And then we're going to join this corner to the top of the three chain that we made at the beginning. So I can see quite clearly mine, one, two, three, and I'm going to take it through the side of the stitch. If for any reason you can't tell where the um, top of the three chain is, you can always look at your trebles that you've just made. So if you see, I can put my fingers between them here and they have a V on the top. So I can count that as one, two, and go to the chain directly beforehand. So I'm going to pop my hook through the side of the top of the three chain, and I'm going to make a slip stitch. I'm going to take the yarn over the hook and draw it all the way through to one. And then I'm going to take my scissors and cut my yarn leaving enough of a length to darn in afterwards. Um, as I say, about up to about four inches, that's 10 centimeters, is enough of a safe length. And take the yarn over the hook one more time and draw it back through and flick it off. And that is round one complete. 
So if we lay round one down on a flat surface and pop our fingers in the corner, we can see now that we've got the beginnings of our granny square appearing. And round two is going to be really turning it into the square shape. And if I pop the one that I've just made on top here, you can see that in round two, we're going to be crocheting into these four corners. So I think for the next two rounds that when you're making your first granny square, it really helps to just pop a little marker in each corner. So I would suggest that you just tie a thread very loosely with just one single knot in each corner and then we'll start round two. I've now tied um, my threads in each of the corners so I can easily identify where I'm going to be working. And I'm going to pick any corner apart from the one where I just finished off. So I'm going to take this corner here, take the thread out, and with my new colour, I'm just going to tie it in. Um, I don't tend to tie mine in, but when you're beginning, it just makes it feel a bit more secure. So we're going to leave enough of a length again so that you can darn your ends in afterwards. But we'll just tie the end in there. And then I'm going to move it out of the way so that we don't crochet over it. And then I'm going to have the thread dangling down to the back of my work. Pop my hook through from front to back, grab the yarn, hook it through, and then I'm ready to make my three chain. So there we go, there's my three chain made to start off round two. And I'm going to give that little end a tug just to pull it in place and then I'm going to just hold that that little um, chain I've made and my row below and just pull them slightly apart to open up that working area right so round two it's going to consist of groups of three trebles and two chains in each corner so we've made our first stitch the three chain represents that first treble so we want to make two more trebles so just to go over making the treble with you it's yarn over the hook hook through that hole yarn over the hook and draw it back through and i've got three stitches on my hook Yarn over the hook, draw it back through the first two, yarn over the hook and draw it back through the second two. So we've now got the three chain that we made and one treble. So we're going to make one more treble. And that's representing our first group of three trebles. And then we're going to make two chain for the corner. And then in exactly the same spot, in exactly the same gap here, we're going to make another three trebles. So that's my first treble. That's my second treble. And that's my third treble so that's my first corner complete now I've got a straight edge to go across so every time we have a straight edge we're going to make one chain between our groups of trebles so now I'm at my next corner so I can take this thread out And in this corner, I'm going to work three trebles, two chain, three trebles. So this is my first treble. There we go. And then my second treble. And then my third treble. Okay, now I'm going to make my corner, so I make two chains. And then I'm going to make three more trebles in exactly the same spot again. Here 
this is my second and my third. And you can really see that this square is beginning to take shape. So now we're going to jump across to the next corner where our marker is, but we've got a straight edge again. So we're going to make one chain. Then we're jumping across to this corner, removing our marker. And again, we're going to make three trebles, two chain and three trebles. my second treble and my third treble and then I'm going to make two chain for my corner and in exactly the same place I'm going to make three more trebles and that will turn the corner That's my second treble and my third treble. Okay, so we're working around this square now. Now we're going to jump across a straight edge to go to the next corner. So we're going to make one chain. Now we can remove the marker out of the last corner and we can make three trebles that's my first that's my second that's my third and again to turn that corner I need to make two chain And then my last three trebles, three trebles in the same place. That's my second and my third. So now just before we connect this up, we're going along a straight edge again. So we want to make one last chain then just like at the end of round one, we're going to join this corner to the top of the three chain that we made at the beginning. So that's one, two, three, and I'm going to pop my hook through the side of the stitch and then yarn over the hook and draw it through both stitches. And now I'm ready to fasten off. Again, I've left enough of an end to darn in afterwards and then I'm just going to take that yarn over the hook and flick it off. And that is row two complete. So now, just before we go on to round three, for the last time, I'm just going to pop those markers into the four corners because on round three, we've now got gaps here. We've got central gaps in the sides that we're going to be working to. And then after this round, we won't need the markers anymore. Okay, so my markers are in place and I'm ready to work round three. And you can see now that we have these holes here in the side. And if I pop this on top, you can see that we've got these corner stitches that we're going to be working and then we've got these straight edges that we're working to. So I'm going to pick a corner again, a separate corner to where I finished off. So I'm going to go for this one, take my marker out and join in a different colour yarn again. And I'm going to just tie that in just like before leaving enough of a length to darn in afterwards. Okay, and then I'm going to let the yarn go to the back again and just push that little knot where I've joined it out the way. Take my hook, 
pop it through the hole from front to back, grab that yarn and put it through and make my three chain to represent my first treble. So we're off now. We know that we need to make three trebles to chain three trebles in the corner and we've got our first stitch made. So I'm going to make my first two trebles. So that's one made. And that's the second one made. Now I'm going to make my two chain. And then in the same place, make three more trebles. That's my second. And that's my third. So we know that when we're working in the corner here, we make two chains and when we've got a straight edge, we're making one chain between each group of three trebles. So I'm going to make one chain and now I've got this space in the middle here, I'm going to work one set of three trebles. my third okay and then I'm still on a straight edge and I've got to go to the corner now where I've got my marker so I'm going to make one chain and then jump to this corner and I can take my marker out and this is where I'm going to make my three trebles to chain three trebles So that's one, two, three. So that's my first set of three trebles. Now I make my two chain. And then I make my next set of three trebles. my third one made and that's my corner complete so now again we've got this straight edge and we've got this hole in the middle so we're going to make one set of three trebles here in the middle and then we're going to make one chain space in between so it's one chain three trebles Okay, so that's my three trebles complete. I've still got a straight edge to get to this corner where the marker is. So I know that's where I'm making my next corner. So I make one more chain. And then where the marker is, I'm going to take the marker out. And I'm going to make three trebles, two chain, three trebles. That's one. two, three. Then I make my two chain and again another set of three trebles. That's my second and that's my third. Okay, so three trebles, two chain, three trebles. We've now got a straight edge again. So we're going to make one chain along the straight edge and one set of three trebles in this chain space. So that's one treble, two trebles, and three trebles. Okay, so we're going along the straight edge again to get to the next corner. 
So as we're on that straight edge, we make one chain. And now we're at this last corner. We can take the marker out. And one last time, it's three trebles, two chain and three trebles. So that's my first. My second. And my third treble. Make two chain to turn the corner and then three trebles in the same space. That's my second. And now my third. And then I've got my last straight edge. So it's one chain and then a set of three trebles in this gap here. That's my third. And then along this straight edge, I make one chain again. And then I'm going to join into the top of my three chain that I made at the very beginning of the round. So that's one, two, three. Put my hook through the side of the stitch and then yarn over the hook and pull back through both, creating a slip stitch. That's joined it. Then I can cut my yarn, leaving enough yarn to darn in afterwards. Yarn over the hook and flick it off. And that is round three complete. So I don't think you'll need the markers anymore now. Um, and when we look at round four, I'm just going to pop that on top so that you can see that this is round four here. So it now becomes very clear that when you're working a corner, you'll always be working three trebles, two chain, and three trebles. And then as you're going along a straight edge, in every gap, you're making three trebles. And between each set of three trebles, you have one chain. So I'm now going to do round four and then our granny square will be complete. So to make our fourth and last round in today's project, I'm going to pick a different corner again and tie in a different color yarn. And have my yarn to the back like before, pop my hook through, grab that yarn and make my three chain. And it should start feeling familiar now that the three chain has represented our first treble and we're going to make two more. I'll just pull that yarn through, it just jumped back through to the front. Right, so we make our next treble. and two chain and three treble. So that's our first corner done. And now we can see that we've got a nice little run going across to our next corner. And it's very clear where the corners are now. And we've got these two gaps. So we're going to be working the three trebles in each um, gap here. And then we're going to be making one chain in between each. So it's one chain, three trebles, your first set of trebles, one chain again. We go to the next gap and we make our next set of three trebles. So that's my next set made. 
and then I'm going to make one chain again to take me to the corner and then in the corner I'm going to make my three trebles two chain and three trebles so this is my two chains and my last three trebles So now I'm going to be working into these gaps along the straight edge, working groups of three trebles and then either side of the three trebles, I'll be making one chain. So it's one chain, three trebles, one chain, three trebles, and one chain again. So I've now reached the next corner and as we know it's three trebles, two chains and three trebles. So that's my second treble, my third and my two chain and then in the same space another three trebles. So now I'm going to work my straight edges and my corners in exactly the same manner and I'm going to meet you back here at the end of the round to finish off for the final time. So now we're back the end of the round we can simply just join into the three chain and make that slip stitch just the way that we've done before and we can just snip that yarn and fasten off. So that's our square complete. We've now got some ends to sew in, but that's actually very straightforward. You're going to have some ends at the base of the stitch of the round and you'll have ends at the top of the stitch in the round as well. But they're both secured because you made a slip knot at the end and you tied these in with a knot. So I'm just going to thread it through my darning needle. And then for the yarn that is at the base of the stitches, that's quite easy. I just take that through the back and bottom of the stitches on a corner. And I take it under all of them. And then I come over the first stitch and I go back in and take it back on myself and take that round the corner as well. Then for the ends that are at the top of the stitch, I'm going to thread my needle. And I'm going to take the needle and the yarn down to the base of the stitch. Okay. Then I'm going to run it around just like before along the back and the bottom of the stitch with the same color. And then you don't want to put it too tightly and then take it over the first stitch and back along through the base of all the corner stitches. And then I can snip that off too. 
and that is your square complete. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and making your granny squares. The next video will be showing you how to join your granny squares together. So remember to subscribe and hit that bell so you get notifications of my new videos. And it would be lovely if you gave my videos a thumbs up too. So for now, thanks for watching, happy crocheting and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.